it's me, man alone. And uh, I'm back. It's your friendly neighborhood man alone. That doesn't sound good. We'll, we'll go back to corporate with that one. Uh, we can't say... That doesn't sound right. Um, and also, we did get your feedback. And I know in the last video, I referred to watchers of my video as, quote, manalonies. Some of you felt that that sounded like a pasta dish, perhaps. Um, and, and I was quick to remind that the, the idea that we threw out in favor of that was manalones. And so we didn't want to, you know, that's we didn't go in that direction. We thought the other direction would make people feel would engender a sense of affinity with the test groups that we did it with. There was huge positive responses. Looking back now, we do understand that uh, the test group with that was just a set of cups. I had just asked a set of cups. Okay, so the the, the one I'm thinking about, and I'm, I'm curious to hear uh, your opinions, is I was thinking, how about, uh, and, and this is, listen, I'm not trying to like make a fanatic, rabid fan base or anything. <laughs> But that wouldn't be terrible. I'm not trying that though. All I want is a is a comfortable way to refer to watchers in my videos. So you don't like manalones, you don't want manalones. What do you feel about manalonies? Or we just say lani for short. If everyone, you know, a little bit of homework, after you're done watching this video for the sixth time, go in the bathroom, look in the mirror. If it's not shattered, because I think a lot of people that watch this channel have shattered bathroom mirrors that not everyone but there seems to be a high correlation you know of like having some sort of night where you're staring in a cracked mirror saying who are you who are you right so it's fine if you can find a good shard take a look at at, at yourself and say am i a lani do i feel lani is that good um, because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm certain that at least a few of you in your lives have heard that you don't look like your name you know, my name is Man Alone, and people say I look like like f a Philip. I don't know. Okay. Anyways, um, I'm not a Lonnie, perhaps, but I am a bit of a liar because I said that my next video is going to be this sort of like freeform RPG thing. I'm getting to it. I put up a community post right now. I'm looking for people who are interested in being part of this little. Uh, tag your it kind of solo RPG thing. We're going to do like nine to 10 minute videos uh, using simple RPG system. And I will start, I'll build a character in a scenario and then I'll sort of pass it off to the next person. They'll add to it. They'll pass it off to the next person. I'll coordinate the whole thing. I'll get a spreadsheet. I'll tag everybody. If you're interested in that, please send me an email at a man alone at proton.me. That's great. Every time I say that, I accidentally say protein.meat. I never say dot .meat, but now that I'm thinking, that's kind of funny. No, it's a man alone at proton.me. And uh, just let me know if you're interested. Um, got a few people interested already. I posted it pretty late, so um, probably won't be able to get everybody. But if, if you're interested, just let me know. The prerequisite, of course, is that you have to be able to upload a YouTube video. This does not mean you have to upload that you don't have to have like a huge channel or following you could you could have no videos But all that's required is that you're able to post a video that I can sort of link to because everyone who Contributes to this I'll like keep people updated to where they can watch like the latest installment of this uh, If you're curious about it, why not give it a shot? What do you got to lose? Try it out uh, you can crash and burn. Um, that's the name of the game. There is no crashing and burning. Whatever happens, the next person will just say yes to it and continue it, unless it's something grotesque or extremely obscene or criminal or anything. Like, don't do any of that. But, um, you know, just carry on the story using a simple RPG system because the name of the game during Intergalactic uh, Solo RPG Month is just getting back in touch with how simple this game is there's so many different supplements and oracles and card decks and online generators and message boards and all this shit you don't need any of that the only thing you need is a pen a highly prestigious stat tracker and if there's any left a fate mill which again uh everything on tower house creative including the venerable fate mill is still 20% off 
uh, for another week until midnight, I think. I don't know what time zone, so don't wait till then. Uh, April 12th at Tower House Creative. That's April 12th, 2024. So if you're watching this in 2072, was there another world war? I'm curious. Send a message back through time. Um, why can't I find my little... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, use promo code MANALONE20 and you can get um, Fate Mill and you can get Bell Whispers. And unfortunately, I've heard from some of uh, the comments that they're not able to send it to Germany or the UK. I thought we were supposed to have an interconnected world now. You know what, though? I have to be honest. I tried to send a package to a Manolani, and I still feel bad about it. It was very expensive shipping, but I paid it, and I was glad to pay it because I was so excited to send a gift, and it got stuck somewhere, and I don't even know. It's going to make me sound like an ignorant American if I just pull out a Belgrade. Is that a place? It's hard for us, guys. All we have is... Canada and Mexico and the Caribbean. We don't have a bunch of countries nearby. Anyways. Um, so yeah, I, 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 um, I, it's sad that they're not able to hopefully at, at some point they will, but I, ha I have to just say in defense of tower house creative, which is not my sponsor and they do not pay me yet. I'm not saying I'm not open to that, but it's so expensive to ship internationally right now. It's, it's, it's bonkers. It's like a hundred dollars to like send a little keychain. Um, so I get it anyways. Once I get some people on the list, we'll do that. I'm excited about that. I'm going to be using, um, what is it called? One page rules and, um, uh, whatever simple RPG system that you'd like, you know, one page rules, the, what's the one that's called the made, matey uppy namey engine, the mune. Um, you could use the dragon bane solos. You can use, um, maybe Vazen has one. You can use, uh, mythic, whatever. You could use nothing. You just talk from the top of your head. Who cares? Tarot cards. Anyways, you've probably already seen the title because who blocks the title before a video, but I can't stop thinking about it morning noon and night i'm obsessed i feel in love with all these beautiful dead worlds and i want to play and i'm just worried that this isn't gonna be a good game to play live in my style because it's kind of complicated but i want to play with you all and I didn't really want to do like a character creation video because I feel that there's a lot of session zeros of role playing games on YouTube, but there's never session ones. And I'm just like baffled that there's not a million videos on this game. This game is so good and has so many novel things, but there's like five videos on it and there was six, but I reported one of them because one of them, you just clicked it and it was just the cover for like two seconds. I mean, I, I'm serious. It was like, you press play and it was just the cover of the book and then it went away and whoever posted it, I was like, oh, maybe this was a mistake. And, and underneath it's like, thank you for visiting for more hot videos sign up now. And I was like, hot videos. You just showed the cover for two seconds. It's like a photo. Anyways, I fought for justice and I think I might've won. I didn't check. I want let's do a session zero. Let's create a character here. Let's set some things up because this is so cool. Just hear me out. Don't go, don't go. Okay. Hold on. What I'm saying is if I create a session zero here, I will have a start of a campaign in the hopper. It will make me want to continue it, all right? I'm not like those other guys. I'm not going to abandon you because I want to create something that we can play with here, and I just feel like I want to do it with all of you right now. And so can, we, can you just give me just a few decades? <laughs> um, but here, here's, what, here's what I'm looking forward to the most because usually... I'm going to, this is time for like honest revelation. 
sometimes during character creation, I get really nervous when like vehicles are a part of that. But I read the section on building your ship and this sounds so easy and so fun. I mean, I guess not easy, but the cool thing is, is that every time you go out on an expedition, you got tons of options for what you do in the ship while you're just like waiting to get there and you have to roll because it usually takes seven weeks. And so you start with like a 40% chance that you'll arrive at your destination and that increases by 10%. And that each time that you do not arrive, I guess you'd say, you use these oracles in the travel section to develop the relationship that you have with NPCs. So right on, random travel events, a D4, it's a social ship malfunction, space anomaly, mental or physical issue. Then you have these social travel events, right? And so maybe you have a conversation with a crew member. These are ship malfunctions, travel events, this must be physical or mental, a miss jump. Uh, you could like jump blind and that I've read that that is like a way to end your game quick because the odds are so low on that. Um, but there is, uh, these like conversational cues that you can have with people while you're traveling, you get to pick the name of a ship and the ship are like these R side vessels, which I did look this up. That's how you say that, that, uh, Scottish Gaelic word is R side. Um, it's got that like apostrophe a that we don't know how to say, uh, but yeah, it's our sigh, our sigh, sorry, our sigh. Um, it, they're our size ships. So you just go on them and they don't really understand them. And they, the, they light up and the controls start and it takes you and you can sort of like learn our side technology over time as you're playing this game. But the ships, like, think about that, like this, um, you know, we're all like, how are we going to invent this interstellar travel and stuff? And in this universe, it's like these ships exist. We don't know who they're from, where they're from, how they work. But when somebody steps on them, they just start a going. At least I think that's what they do. I haven't, um, you know, read everything yet. But OK, anyways, you start out, schedule a mission on Karam Station. Uh, you you pack, you plan what you need. You could do a little higher risk if you pack like less oxygen and food. You can ration food, but not oxygen. Um, and you kind of got to decide. And then this clock, my stat tracker. Now, it should be six for like 10 minutes each. But what I'll do is every time I cross one out, it'll be like 10 minutes because I was not looking to like writing up a bunch of those boxes. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes. And then when I cross it, it's an hour. Oh, it's perfect. This stat tracker is one of the most prestigious solo RPG items you can get. It's like the Rolex of solo RPGs. And I think I bought the only one. Sorry. Um, random site names. I'm trying to find, uh, yeah, this is the problem without an index in this book. Um, anyways, I, uh, there we'll figure it out, but there's ways to like generate different topics of conversation. Maybe you say, Oh, you know, uh, one of the ones on the random tables, like talk about something, some difficulty that you had in your life, you know, talk about, uh, you know, develop a bond or there's also like negative conversational options where you, you kind of like have a disagreement and then that adds to your stress level, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know if that makes me an extremely boring person. It's like, I can't wait to be on the ship and have meaningless conversations with people who are just different parts of my frontal lobe. But to me, that sounds cool, man. I can't help it. Nothing can be helped. Why can I not find this, though? That is, like, perplexing. Plug for perplexing ruins. All right, I'm wasting time. Uh, we'll, we'll find it. So what I want to do, I want to write this up here. I did find uh, a website that I hope I can find now. Uh, do I have it? Nope. Um, well, I had a website. It's fine. We don't need it right now. I'll put it on paper. We'll do the paper for now and I'll transfer it onto the website just to go through the process of it. And I want to remind everybody, you know, buy this, you know, that like you're buying this for a lot more than just the words. But I will say, if you did want to kind of play along or you wanted to, to get going on your own, 
on the website, which is uh, across a thousand dead worlds. Uh, maybe I'll be able to find it here. One second. How's this? Yeah. Okay. So that's a character thing. Across a thousand dead worlds. Um, on the the main website, which is not this one, I just put it in really quick. Oh, goodness sake! All right, give me a second. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Topic. Um, what's your favorite shoe, Elizabeth? Okay, on the website across a thousand dead worlds. Uh, under tools and downloads, there is a, uh, first of all, they have a, uh, all the sheets you need. Then they have a rules reference manual, which is like almost all of the rules in a very condensed form. And they also have a system reference document. And this is just like in a PDF format. Like, uh, folks, this is not like four pages. This is like, here, I'm going to scroll. Like, this is readily available. This is, look at this. This is like what do, you know, I you know from a, from a design standpoint, I'll tell you what this is. This is the MS Word thing that you do first before you pull it over into like Affinity or InDesign or whatever. It's like almost the whole game. Honestly, I find this easier to read, but I find it not as fun to have on my bookshelf and to hold in my hand, obviously, because it's, it's a beautiful book. But this has like everything and it's available for free on the website. So, so why not just, you know, if you want to play along, you want to check this game out. Um, I know that this, I know that we can make this game successful. We do a playthrough of this game and we, we like it. We talk about it. We can get more buzz because it's been out since last year and it's got a beautiful website. It's got a beautiful book. It's got uh, a lot going for it, but I just don't see a lot other than a few reviews. And I think that's a mistake. I think that's an oversight from the community. Uh, this dude, Alex T. Rules, one of the um, interviews, he's just speaking Spanish. It's a fully, I think it's like uh, uh, from, from uh, I, I don't know who's interviewing him, but he, I thought there was going to be like a translator. He's just, he's just nailing it out in Spanish. I mean, uh, it was, it was pretty awesome. I don't know if he's a native Spanish speaker. I mean, I'm making a lot of assumptions. Uh, you know that I'm heart of gold, heart of gold. Okay. So <clears throat> what I do want to do right now though, um, is I don't know if I want to just sit here and type all this stuff in. I feel like that will be kind of boring if I just type it in, but maybe I could transfer it onto this for next time and we'll just use the sheets for now because it'll it'll go a lot uh, more easily if I do that. But uh, we could track it that way. Um, let's just start from the top, okay? Let's just start with character creation. Don't leave. Where are you going? You can leave me on. Just go in the other room. If you're in a car, don't go to the other room, especially if you're driving because that means you'll go to the back seat. All right. So we are going to go to character creation on page nine. So again, you work for Karam Station. This is very similar to like a lot of these uh, um, current space contractor games like uh, Mothership, Death in Space, have these sort of like, hey, you know, you got to sign this contract, which is actually applicable though because you are um, you kind of in debt, and I really like that mechanic. It starts you off on the back foot, but it also gives you clarity of purpose. Yeah, now we're getting into it. So the person's called a deep diver. Um, congratulations on being selected to explore the vast wonders of the Arsai left behind, this ancient race. We're very excited to get to know you. Follow these simple steps so we can learn who you are, your skills. You're a deep diver reserved for explorers like you. Just like the deep divers of old Earth did before the oceans died. <sighs> God, that must have been terrible. You're just like on the ocean and then it's just like starts coughing and then it just goes <sighs> and evaporates. Uh, you're going to venture into the cold, vast unknowns. I don't know why this graphic is on both this page and this page. And I'm always wondering, is that like just a thing that makes it look like a classified document or, or cause this looks like something I would put in a game if I was like, I'll put a picture here later, but either way, 
love that you just left it there. All right, so you start your career at level one. Primary attributes are going to be strength, dex, constitution, will, intelligence, charisma. And um, you set each to eight. And then you, where's my fun clicky pencil? Somebody wrote a comment about how I hold a pencil. It's true. I'm left-handed and I hold the pencil across the bridge of my fingers like this. It does sometimes callous and get a little bit sore, but it's how I've written my whole life. And so I just do it. That's what I do. So what we'll say here is we are going to... Uh, primary attributes may never be above 18. We have eight for everybody. And so let me, um, why don't I come back to that and, and just see if I'm better informed in that distribution. I'll just like nominally list these as eights right now, just so that we know. And then I'll put a little 12 here just to know that we have that to distribute. But if we get a better sense of what kind of diver or whatever that we're ringing up, then it will be easier to determine like the stat distribution. Uh, so we have uh, primary attributes and secondary. Um, to pass an attribute check, it's D20 and then add the attribute value. And so that's, that's how it's going to go in this game. It's mostly a D20 resolution system. You have your stat and you add, you know, you roll and then you add your stat to it. And if it's over 20, it's usually a success. Unless it's very hard, then it might have to be over 25 or even over 30. Um, but then you have this luck. Luck works a lot like inspiration. It's intervene fate. Um, I hope this gets cleared up because this is sort of like, and, and I'm not a person to figure out these kind of things. So when it's obvious to me, I hope it gets resolved. But basically it says you start out with these three luck points, right? And you can use them to reroll dice or you can spend all of your luck to completely negate a killing blow. And I'm just wondering, well, now that I'm reading it, I guess maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I was full of shit. But what I was thinking is like, there's a wide variance in like what all of your luck means, right? And so do you negate a killing blow with one or with three? And then does that come into play where if you like, you're encountering an enemy that you know is about to give you a killing blow, I would normally just be like, well, I guess I'm going to just spend up all my luck points. Maybe it does work. I don't know. Th there I go thinking I'm clever. Never think you're clever. Um, PC start with three luck and recover one up to a max of five at the end of each game session. And then stamina again starts at 10. Apparently gear and stuff can modify that some abilities, but you spend this to do actions and it's really it really breaks down to like move and hit, but there are a few that are like um, three. So if you do like kind of like a low power attack, that's three. I still don't know how that'll work out, but it could be good if you're like right next to somebody and you wanna go like three, 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 you can get three hits off using the 10 stamina. We start with 10 and then stress. Uh, if you played mothership, this is gonna be no surprise to you. Uh, you have to be very resilient to pressure, but you're only human. Many situations cause a character to gain stress, as described on page 90. Uh, you begin with zero stress. So that's usually how it goes, and that stress will continue to climb uh, and will start to have effects after a while. And then wounds, there's only so much punishment you can take before it gives up. Wounds are fully explained on page 72, but most characters can only sustain three wounds before dying. And if you watch the previous video on this, Wounds are really the, the only game in town. Um, most damage, I don't know if most, but uh, uh, damage that is not sufficient to pierce through armor and get by the dodge is going to be negligible. It's only when that stuff is powerful enough to wound you, which can, depending on the setting, depending on the game, could have a fair amount of verisimilitude because it's like if you're wearing a Kevlar vest, uh, this is probably not totally true because I know even if you get shot in a Kevlar vest, it still hurts like shit, but, um, you know, it's not going to be a killing blow if, if someone does a glancing blow on your armor or something like that. Okay. Uh, skills range from zero to 15 and represent prowess in a determined field. No surprise here to pass a skill check, roll a D 20 and add the ask skills value. If the total is equal or higher to 20, you've succeeded another one of these. Uh, so we got 70 points among the following skills, spending no more than 10 points on a single skill. Now, what's interesting is, are there archetypes in this game? Um, because I would rather know, like, my archetype. Okay, so actually, um, 
this I want to do first. I want to do a background first. And that way I can know how to like orient myself to it. So this is a D10. Uh, that's a D. I, I always pick up a D12. Why? Why? Why can't I, there's some piece of my brain missing my, <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> I was about to say frontal lobe, but then I was about to say there's some piece of my fallopian tube missing. Um, I don't know what part of my brain it is, but it's a two, which means I'm a blue collar worker. Uh, that is too close to who I am, and I would like. I'm too familiar with that, and so just calling in a uh, game master veto right now. I just uh, sometimes it's good to play in accord with what I am and what I like, but right now I'm just kind of feeling like looking at the world from like a different lens. So let's see what else we got. Eight. A plastic miner. There we go. So um, my background is. Do I have anywhere to put that? I could just, I guess, uh, background. Plastic miner. Okay. Uh, you're, you're spent in the old world's plastic deposits were enough to make you want to leave the planet for good. Nothing out here could possibly be worse. So I get medical aid and survival. Fine. Uh, so I'll just write that in now. Plus one med, plus one survival. So now we have a better sense. So yeah, it's probably still uh, probably lower than a blue collar worker. I'm thinking I'm sort of like, you know, if I'm a plastic miner, I'm like kind of what replicants were doing like in Blade Runner. So I probably don't come from, uh, you know, I, I, I come from a background where I, I do work out of necessity. I have to, and it's not pleasant, but I got to do it. So now I want to distribute 70 points. So our side tech, um, at best, it's somewhat utilized or partially comprehend a piece of our side tech required for hacking our side systems. Due to our side systems, arcane nature, the skill begins at negative five. And I'm going to keep my dude's skills at negative five in that respect, because I don't think a plastic miner uh, we could be surprised, but I don't, I, my sense is that that's not something that they somehow know their life experiences, you know, even probably the best hackers on, on, um, that are not, you know, these old civilization, like current people probably don't know much about our site tech. So there's no reason that a plastic miner would be like, you know, I was down here thinking I got an, I got an idea about those glowing ships with no control panel, uh, close combat fight using close range tactics with a variety of melee weapons. So max is 10 in any single skill. Uh, something in my heart of hearts says that that's a six. What I just wondered right now is um, if this negative five, do I get that back? Yeah, no, I guess it just begins there. I don't get that back. Uh, manipulation. Talk to an NPC. This is typically more beneficial than shooting at them. Sometimes a silver tongue or well placed. That is the only way to close the deal. Plastic miner that is uh, charismatic. What does that look like? Like the jokester on the side. Like, hey, Jerry, that's a trivial person, though. I would like my person to be someone who works on an economy of emotion. So I'm actually going to go ahead and say that their manipulation, uh, they, they believe in an honest thing, but they know when to keep their mouth shut. We'll call that a four. Um, so just so that I'm keeping track here, six, four. Um, and then we have medical aid. So this one will be, so maybe I'm like the site medical aid person. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself an eight for that. I'm not like a physician or anything, but I know first aid, I know field medicine. Maybe I served in some sort of military capacity or maybe I come from a family of that. Um, so if you pass a medical aid check outside of combat, you remove one wound from your character. Doing so advances the time track by one and consumes a medical supply. Perception, find or be aware of the things around you. It doesn't matter how many r crystals you're hauling back to the ship if you don't notice the twisted abomination lurking behind you. I always say that. You know, uh, did you get back to your car safe? Yes. Was there a lurking abomination behind you? Well, I didn't check. Okay. You're lucky then. Um, I would say that this is a person that is very perceptive. I think that this is a person who... Um, is able to have a rich internal life by focusing on the small details. I'm going to give an eight for that. I think this is like, 
in some ways an exceptional person. Maybe the others around them don't know. Pilot any kind of spaceships. Most characters aren't pilots, but you never know when it might come in handy. So I don't think this uh, this fellow is a pilot, but I do think probably has to do maybe some like the equivalent of like a space forklift or something like that. Knows how to move around heavy machinery. Knows how to get behind the wheel of like basic vehicles and probably doesn't know how to fly a shuttle or anything, but is the type of person who could probably be talked through it by like the equivalent of an air traffic controller. All right, range combat. Um, hmm. Let's just see what it says. Five. That is what I was going to give it. Let's give it a five there. Okay. Um, resolve. I think this should be high with sand psychological impact to stress. Yeah. I think that that, if you're just mining plastic, I actually want to give resolve a 10. Let's see how that, that feels later on. Uh, science, uh, biology, physics. Uh, I think this person is able to apply the principles of it. I don't think they have an expertise at it. I'm going to go ahead and give that a five. Uh, stealth, uh, average five. We'll redistribute these. Uh, and then survival, I think this, I want to put that a 10. Okay, so let's just see where we're at. And then tech, uh, use tech devices, computers, electronics, comms, patch up a system. My intuition is telling me seven on that. So right now we have uh, six, 10, 18, uh, 26, 30, 35, uh, 45, uh, 55, 65, 72. So I got to knock down two points here. So I'll take one off of... Sobrevivir. Y el otro, eh? I like having one at 10. What do I feel is maybe a little bit high. Uh, perception, I like that. Tech, let me let me pull tech down to six. Okay. Um, so I guess I can get it up to 15, but right now it's 10 is the most. So this is a nice little combination here. And now let's go back. Well, I don't know how these other things affect the attributes. I guess attributes are when you're doing just like a raw check that a specific skill doesn't apply to. Uh, and so again, when you first create it, set each primary attribute to eight and then distribute 12 attribute points among them. So we'll say, uh, give myself for now two points strength. Um, one point of dex, um, I'm going to give, is that const? Yeah, the constitution, I'm going to give three points, um, four, I give 12, um, willpower. I'm also going to give three, 11 and intelligence. I'll give two, nine. And charisma, I'll give. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Two would be ten. And then, well, let me see what that equals. So it should be eight, 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 eight. eight. So that would be eight, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-two, forty, forty-eight. Plus twelve is sixty. So this should equal sixty. So ten plus nine, nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-one. What is that? An eleven. Twenty-one plus eleven is thirty-two. Uh, thirty-two, forty-two, sixty. Okay, I think that works, right? Or did I just talk bullshit? 48. Right? Oh, you're not here right now. You can't answer me. Uh, 8 times 6 is 48. Plus 12 should be 70. So did I not give myself enough here? Um, oh, this is so probably so frustrating when you watch this video because this is one of the things that makes me feel weird weirdly stressed out when I'm watching a YouTube video when I like know the answer, but the person on the video doesn't know it. So I apologize. We'll just have to get through this. I'm suddenly thinking I want a little more strength. So I'm going to try to pull uh, strength down. Uh, I'm going to up by three. And then for dex, I'm going to give myself one. So that brings us to eight. And then for constitution, I'm going to give myself three. And we'll go to 11, brings me down to five. Will, I'm going to give myself three. 
it puts to 11. See, what I'm worried about is that 11 is one of those weird numbers. If it's like, if there's any modifiers, 11 always seems to be just under it, but oh well, that's fine. Um, so that gave me three. So I have two left, so I'll just do nine intelligence. You know what? I'm going to do eight charisma, and I'm going to give myself another one in uh, strength. Okay. 12, 21, uh, 32, 43, 52, 60. Good. Okay. What if I just left it there? Would that drive any of you bonkers? I won't. I won't leave it there. All right. That seems good. Um, then the gear can kind of up that. Uh, talents. Characters must adapt in extraordinary ways to face the world's, uh, the void's horrors. Talents are unique skills and abilities they learn exploring the dark. So these are like special skills. Uh, player characters have five talent slots. Each time a PC gains a level, as described on page 28, they roll once on the talent table. If a character has five talents and learns a new one, they discard and exist. I hate that. <laughs> I get it, but I hate that. I discard a talent. No, you don't discard talents. Come on. We could have, it should be a better, I'm going to think about it. Maybe there's a better way to do that. I don't like that. You could level them up or something. Well, we'll, we'll just do what it says for now and then we'll improvise. Uh, when creating a diver, choose one talent. Depending on the role you want to play, we recommend the following starting talent. So if you're close combat, charge, range fighter. So stealthy, support, leader, hacker. Um, I think we're going to have to do a close combat guy. And so I need to get four points. So I'm going to take one off of tech. I'm going to take, uh, no, we'll leave so I'm going to take one off of science. I'm going to take one off of medical aid. And I'll take one off of perception. And then with close combat, I'm going to give myself a 10. That way we have a good strength level, we have good close combat, and then it recommends charge, which is you can barge into melee, gaining plus five skill and plus five damage during your first turn. Cannot be used in conjunction. You know what I don't love though? That all of these are related, well, I guess not leader, or maybe hacking. I just wish that there were more roles that weren't related to combat. I would rather play this game as like discovery and resource acquisition. And instead we have close combat, range, stealthy, support, which is like healer. Mm, Why well, don't, so I can choose one talent so I could choose one of, I could choose anyone. I don't have to roll on it. I actually think I want to do counter attack. Um, cost is five. Oh, I don't. Okay, so five stamina. While wielding a melee weapon, if you win the combat roll during an opponent's turn, your attack automatically causes one wound. Dual wielding. Each turn you attack, you may use an offhand weapon to attack again. We don't even have any weapons yet. I'm going to do Calm, just because I've been around the block. Calm is each time you gain stress, you gain one less. Minimum of one. That's what I choose. Okay, so background, we did Plastic Miner, and so now I can add plus one to Medical Aid and plus one to Survival. So that puts my Survival to 10. And that puts my medical, I certainly hope this medical aid is able to be applied to myself because I imagine as I was reading through it, I think I'm going to do a crew of two NPCs because um, usually in a game, you know, having too many NPCs can sometimes be hard to handle depending on the, the system. 
But I think since there's like a lot of waiting in this game, I think it's probably a good idea to to have NPCs just to do stuff. Okay, well, D20, a life-changing event. 19, you discovered you had a talent you didn't know of. Um, now, that's kind of interesting, though, because obviously I don't think they mean that I, that I get a free talent. Um, you had a talent you didn't know of. Okay. Here's what I think my talent is. Um, I think my talent was, and, and it was like a funny talent my, my whole life, but I never thought about how it would be useful. But I was able to listen and pay attention to two things at once. And because of this, even though I'm not like exceptionally smart, even though I'm not exceptionally, um, you know, scientifically, I don't have a lot of education or anything. I have this thing where I can listen, pretend I'm listening to one person, but then also be listening to a full conversation at the same time, but still like be engaged in the one in front of me. So nobody's the wiser. And the advantage that this has given me is that I have been able to overhear tons of conversations by top brass of the mining company that they didn't know I was listening to because they were out of earshot and I was pounding out plastic uh, from whatever caves, walls, oceans, probably. Um, and so because of that, I was able to say the right things and um, just so happened to ask, you know, they would maybe say, Oh, we got to, who the hell are we going to send on this? You know, uh, mission or whatever. None of these are going to want it. And I say, oh, well, and then I suddenly walk up and say, hey, there's no off uh, off planet activities that uh, you need done, right? Just at the right time. And we'll see how else this could this could be useful in a variety of circumstances that have not yet revealed themselves. But we'll say uh, my, my talent that I didn't know is I'm good at overhearing. Uh, how did I earn my place? So this apparently is a, a somewhat important uh, piece of this uh, here is like, how did you get yourself in the diver position? Now, I don't know if I'm going to accept one of the outcomes or, well, let's see if we'll have to like work it out. Oh man, what is, what the hell? What kind of role is that? Oh, one, that's a weird die. Usually the, the one on a Caltrops is like up here. It's at the bottom, uh, whatever. Uh, you save for years to buy a ticket. I dig that. What I was worried about getting was like you had family money, which I guess I could have said that, you know, some aunt died and, and I spent all this, but I like this. I saved for years to buy a ticket. How you doing? I hope that you got the SRD documentary. I hope that you have this because this is, I think this is going to be a special game. I'm feeling good about this. And I actually um, am feeling like things are, and knock on wood, actually, I'm not even going to say it. Well, I was going to say that I feel things are moving along even faster than Star Forge, but I think I might eat my words. Uh, however, I will say that they recently released a 27 page document that I have on the way from drive through. And I also got a PDF. Uh, and it is because a lot of, um, even very positive reviews for this were like, one of the things I had trouble with was like uh, generating villains and NPCs and stuff. And they have this document, Black Oath, uh, who published this called uh, Starting Crew and Exploration Sites. And so hopefully they also do like, a, a, like something akin to a bestiary. I doubt that they will call it that. Um, but yeah, so I... Well, I'm not going to waste it. I'll show that next time. But yeah, it has like a couple NPCs and stuff that I can drum some things up quickly. Um, okay, pick a main drive for your deep diver. You, the reason why they risk their life in the void. There's something very personal that characters rarely share. Wealth? Nah. Power? Nah. Fame? Nah. Wanders less? Maybe. Knowledge? Maybe information a family member or friend disappeared during an expedition you just couldn't let it go you've come to search for them even if you don't know where to begin espionage 
That could be interesting. Espionage. Uh huh. Okay. A story's coming together for me, but somewhere to belong. You've been alone or at least felt that way your whole life. You're sick of it. Yeah, I like that one. Somewhere to belong. I feel I feel that calls me right now. You know, I think that maybe I took this plastic mining job. Maybe I didn't even need to. Maybe I could have had a better job, but I've just never I've never felt that this world, quote unquote, or any of these worlds were for me. And I took this job to just be away from people and not be bothered, but something changed in me. Something suddenly made me want more mannerisms when you are feeling confident you i wish it told me how many of these were i have to pick one i would rather uh choose one one two three four five six seven eight it's a d8 where's a nice d8 here oh he rolls a d8 so nice all right hold on let's see that's a d come on oh i always neglect that's a d10 do i not have it okay here we go four uh reroll five one two three four five you're feeling uh, when you are feeling confident you feel like wearing something flashy uh yeah okay that's kind of like um plays against the character i was creating but but actually uh that's interesting i like that because um what we need I think what we need to be careful of when we have a sullen character is that we start getting something where the person barely says anything. And that can be good if you're like in a Nicholas Winding Refn movie, but for an RPG, we need something. We need some sort of connection. So maybe dude has some cool fashion sense or some interesting ideas just on like gear and how to wear it. When you feel shy or you're lacking confidence, five you keep your hands in your pockets oh my god i've got to be up for work in four hours and it's not that i'm worried it's that i just i can't stop when you're bored you this is a d6 six twiddle your thumbs that's probably why i put my hands in my pockets When you're feeling happy, you smile at everyone. Who knew? Maybe it's like a meek, demure smile. Not very convincing, maybe. When you're frustrated, crack your knuckles. All right, this guy's got a lot of like hand cracking and twiddling and all this stuff going on. My nervous tick. It's a D1, which is D fun. Let's use the fate mill, why not? It's 14, fiddling, <laughs> fiddling with a pendant or brick. Okay, we need something that's not fiddling. Uh, four is clicking your fingers. 19, ridiculous, laughing loudly, but this could be part of the smile thing, so maybe like a pseudo bulber affect. So we'll say this is the nervous tick. I think this is actually on the first page. We'll just say laughing inappropriately. Okay. So that's what happens. Well, you know, though, this is like when you're really stressed out. And I think that's kind of interesting because that is something that people do. Uh, characters start with D20 times 100 DC. Drake coins, 15. So I got 150 Drake coins buy now somebody who's watching this go ahead and, and buy i know this probably exists as an nft or something go ahead and pick me up 150 drake coins um so that's the money they have left over after coming to Karam station and paying for the mandatory orientation remember staying in Karam is not free and most characters are smart enough to set aside some cash to pay their bills because if not they get ejected immediately um last but not least give your character a name Gender, age, 18 plus, nationality, and any other details you wish. Height, weight, skin color, hairstyle, anything goes. I'll figure that out later. Um, 
you may use NPC tables in chapter five to further divine your character. And then just improving your characters. They spend time venturing in the void and recovering pieces of valuable tech or knowledge. Your deep diver will progress only by successfully deliver valuables to KSA will you earn experience points. So we know the name of the game here. This is a scavenge return. I love it. That's a nice loop. Start at level one. Every time you or your crew submit a thousand DC and valuables to the Karam Station Authority, you'll increase your level by one. So I'll probably roll the rest of this up before we meet next. But this is a good baseline here. I think the the one thing that I need to give you before we part, just so that you can um, you can begin to develop a parasocial relationship with this person, is a name. What is in a name? What it is? What is in a name? Would a rose not smell as sweet? Look at this. We could skip this page because we have the fate mill, so we don't need to use the prediction subroutine. Booyah! Lunchtime. That's what BLT stands for. All right. Let's see here. I keep thinking this is the name page, and it's like my name is Primitive Difficulty. All right. Character surnames and names. The D100. I'm not actually going to roll it because it'll be on the floor. I'm going to touch number 36. And Adriana. So, um, yeah, that's fine. You know what? I never. I don't know. Play women. Play Adrian. Oh, we'll say a Adrian for now. Let's see what we're feeling about that. Um, and then. 13, Ilgaz, I-L-G-A-Z, uh, level one, and XP zero, and, well, well, we'll figure out the quirks and everything like that, but, uh, ah, finally, the conversation stuff, this is what I was talking about, so a recent event in their family, gear, their failures. So any of these ones that are highlighted in this other color, though, that's sort of like a negative reaction, and that increases stress, which I actually like that um, because, dude, if you ever are stuck with somebody somewhere and they suck at talking or you just don't vibe, that is legitimately stressful. I don't care how tough you are about it. That is a stressful situation when you're like, ah, I'm like it's like sitting next to somebody that you're going to be sitting next to for 18 hours and they're just like a jerk. So I think we'll do a three-member crew. We'll get some NPCs going. Um, we'll get this this fate mill rocking and rolling next time. Uh, but Adrian Ilgaz has come into being, and we're very excited to see where our character takes us. Please join us again next time. Um, and remember, always drive care with care for others on the road because you just forget.